Jacob, and we're going for a drive. Bronco Sport. Heritage without launch control. We're almost there. All right, that's enough. Horsepower and torque. 181 horsepower, 190 pound-feet of torque from a 1.5 liter EcoBoost three-cylinder. We haven't driven that motor in a Bronco Sport yet, but most importantly, this is the Heritage Edition, so it's white. Yes, white roof, robin's egg blue, and then we also have a nice pinstripe with the old classic Bronco logo and some white steelies, which are actually aluminum. And the white grill. With red lettering. Yeah, and then there's also another Bronco Sport Heritage, which is the Limited, which has a different white grille that has more holes. And then that one you can get in yellow, and it has the better engine. Yeah, way better engine, and this engine sucks. So before we get into the styling choices and if you should get one of these classic-looking ones instead of the newer Blackout style ones, what is your problem with this engine? Okay, so it's actually not the speed. Yes, it's slow, but I'm able to deal with it totally fine. Wow, that's a cool six series. Yeah, what is yeah. that? Eight know, series? I like it. M6. M6. Wow. wow. That okay. looks so cool. Back to this engine. So it vibrates incessantly at idle. Is that a word? Yes, it is. At certain RPMs as well when you're driving, when you're like, I found like 60 kilometers per hour when the RPMs are around 1100 and then you can't actually control them because there's no paddles. This is an eight speed auto, it's not a CVT, but holy crap, does this vibrate all the time. When I'm in a drive through, when I'm just pulling away from a stop sign and the stop start hasn't activated, it is so annoying. Yeah, it's got a, a lot of weird little vibrations. Like it's pretty subtle. Like it's not as annoying to me as it was on my grandma's 2015 CRV that they actually uh, sued in small claims court a Honda dealership in Toronto and got money back because those needed to get engine mounts and they were selling them screwed up and just hoping people didn't notice. Yeah, but you haven't driven it by yourself with no gear in here and that's what makes the difference. As soon as you hopped in, we threw all this gear in, the vibration actually improved. The resonating frequencies are very weight dependent, it seems, in this particular model. Yeah, so honestly, for me, if you're a solo driver, this powertrain is a deal breaker. And so for that reason alone, I cannot in good faith recommend this vehicle. I would have to recommend the limited trim because we had no problem with that two liter EcoBoost. We actually really liked it. So I would have to say, just go with that one. Okay, what other mechanical things do you get different with that limited trim? You get a different all wheel drive system. So you get a couple of different goat modes. We only have uh, five goat modes in this one. I think in the upper trim, you get like seven goat modes, which by the way, are the drive modes. I mostly would want that for that yellow. Yeah, that, the yellow's nice. That pale yellow. But I mean, so this Robin's Egg Blue also fits this like okay. heritage. Okay, thing. let's talk about the looks, what, what this is and why it's cool. So 1966 Ford Bronco had white on it, so that's why they've got this. Yep. Is it a good representation of that? Because to me, this is kind of like, so the Plymouth Prowler was the Bronco, the PT Cruiser was the Bronco Sport, and then when you put wooden panels on a PT Cruiser, that's like the white heritage version of the Bronco Sport. Okay, so I actually do like this when I first saw it in photos. I didn't love it, but seeing it in person, it makes a lot of sense. Now, I think this exists for old people because I was actually getting dog food and this old lady, like grandma, gestured to roll down my window, which has never happened to me in a car ever before. And she said, I love your car. I said, thank you. She said, I had an original one that I drove across Canada. And she said that it looked similar to this one. And then she asked me, is this the old one? I said, well, no, it's a new one that's meant to look like an old one. She said, wow, I really love the wheels and the color. So it's, they nailed it. They nailed it. Looks wise, like I love the look. This is for like boomers and grandmas and grandpas and it's perfect. And like, people with a hard boomer energy like me. Yeah, exactly. Big, big boomer energy. Yeah, but otherwise the regular Bronco Sport exists for buyers that don't really care about the 60s model. I think this color spec looks so like 10 times better than the normal Bronco Sport. It makes it look pretty cool, not gonna lie. So these wheels. They look perfect, like perfect style. Like that's all we wanted on the Defender. The Defender couldn't get us the white wheels. And here they look great. And then what Continental tire do we actually have on here? The Cross Contact ATR, which is the OEM tire for this car. But another good alternative choice would be the Cross Contact LX25. 
Also, it's summer tire season, so go get those tires swapped out. Click the link below to see what's your Continental recommended tire for your car. And then doesn't this kind of remind you of that one Jeep that we drove, the blue oh, one? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's kind of exactly that and Jeep. And then this kind of is also very FJ-ish as well. It is, more so the big Bronco, because there is a big Bronco version of the Heritage as well. So do you think in like 50 years, if we're still around, or our kids or whatever, they're gonna be like, oh, this is the Heritage Edition of the Bronco Sport <laughs> Heritage Edition. That'd be so right? funny. Like, for sure. I don't know, because who cares about a Bronco Sport, but because they did it to the regular Bronco. It's gonna be a floating space car with like <laughs> white jets. Okay, let's send this floating space car through concurrent configuration through Cliche Corner, and it's okay. Uh, feels just like a regular Bronco. We have that Haas suspension, which uh, honestly is kind of doing it no favors on the road. It feels okay through cliche. It's a little bit bumpy in daily driving. Like I wanted this to be softer considering the exterior and everything like that. This is kind of off-roady or at least it's implied to be off-roady. Yeah. So, and it's got a little bit of a suspension lift. So I, I want it to be softer. Yeah, it is like a little, a little econo box. It's not unbearable. It's not too stiff. It's just, I want it a touch softer. That grandma who saw you, Yep. I bet you she wouldn't care. She probably got the same feeling of suspension and like not caring as Yuri where there's like a nice big fat like margin of like I don't care I'm fine with I don't this. know man Th these vibrations combined with the suspension she'd be like nah I'm out although her back's probably in better condition than mine but let's see your back in condition in the driver's seat in here that made no sense but let's just swap anyways <laughs> but what does it sound like from the outside <laughs> But what does it sound like from the outside? Traction off, floor at launch. Sport <laughs> mode. There was like two levels of things happening there. Yeah, this is like, uh, you know what? This is like <laughs> Nissan Sentra slow. But since it's not a CVT, it doesn't feel nearly as bad. Yeah, or a Corolla Cross, the, the regular one. It's not yeah. that bad. Because, like, I was looking at the speedo, and it, like, really <laughs> wasn't getting there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now that you're up to normal speed, just floor it. It's okay to downshift. That was sport mode, though. Okay, yeah. So when you're in normal mode, it, it's kind of slow. Grandma's not driving in sport mode. God, no. She's in buck and bronco mode. <laughs> See there? <laughs> That was like two or three gears and it just took a while. Yeah, I don't know how many people are gonna floor that. Yeah, it's just, a, it's a weird thing. It's yeah, a weird... I just, I wish they offered the powertrain independently of the entire trim level. It feels kind of all right through cliche. Like, yeah, it's okay. It's not a sports car, but it's definitely a Bronco sport. Yes, car. sporty. It feels it's all wheel nice. drive, which we should say. Uh, it's not like four by four, like a real Bronco, but yeah. Well, how are you supposed to go out anywhere? Goat anywhere? How are you supposed to go anywhere if you don't have all-wheel drive? Front-wheel drive can't do it, right? No. And if you want it to go anywhere, this is actually rated at 8.9 liters per 100 kilometers combined, and I've actually been getting better than that, which is really impressive. And then you can even tow up to 2,000 pounds with this little three-cylinder. So this this, is kind of, this can kind of be like just like a Civic or Corolla alternative that you want to... Oh, Chevy... Not Chevy. Toyota CHR? HRV? Corolla Cross. No, no, but the old one. That also That's had too a, small though. But that also had a, a mode, a version with the white roof and stuff. Oh, yeah, Similar yeah. Similar energy. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying like size-wise and stuff. No. No. Okay. So like, yeah, this is kind of just like, I like Civic. Maybe I'm older and I want an easier way to get in so I don't drop as much and I like old styling. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. I, I mean, you have to buy this purely based off styling. And it's perfect for style. Like, I love this. It like, is. I would love to see this in my driveway. And this isn't that much more than a regular equivalent trim Bronco Sport. So then moving on to the interior, we got some cool, fun materials. Nothing looks cheap, but I'm getting a nasty rattle from like the roof area and I think from the infotainment. Yeah, and there's some cheap plastics kind of down here, but at least it's not gloss black, so I'm okay with that. It's very appropriate for what this is. Yes, and then these seats are incredible looking. This uh, navy pier blue or whatever with the stitching that's blue and red. Yeah. This is awesome. But if you get the good engine, you're forced into leather seats. Yeah, which sucks, that's why. Like just allow the good engine to be optioned in this base trim. 
pretty sure they know what they're doing. I know. Because they're trying to make some money. Yeah. And then I did notice when I got in, there is some carpet visible. If there were a set of tux mats in here, it would probably have a lot more coverage. Go to tuxmat.com slash the straight pipes to see what they have for your car because they definitely have mats for this car. By the way, we're having a meetup April 29th at Tuxmat headquarters in Scarborough. So check out the link below. Come visit us. That's right. Cars and Coffee with Jacob and Yuri. We are sharing it on Instagram, RSVP. Click the link. We'll see you guys there. So putting my phone places in here, I got a nice little shelf underneath the infotainment. I can put it here too. I can put it in the cup holder. And there's this net here. Lots of cool options. And what about the cup holder? Does it pass? Hell yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, it does. Visors? And I think they'll pass. Three, two, one. Yes. Wow. I feel like these were like all lubed up and ready to slide. They were greasy. The infotainment, nice and small. Volume knob, tuning knob, Apple CarPlay. If you're in Apple CarPlay and you want to get back to your normal screen, click this sound button and that'll take you back to the sound settings where you can have all your stuff at the bottom. It's a great alternative to having a home button. Pinnacle of Ford infotainments, possibly? No, the new ones are pretty good, the ones that aren't uh, vertical. Yeah. Like the F-151, which is still sideways. I, I don't know which Ford infotainment's the best. It must have been something like five years ago, I think. No, because that was like Sync 3 and stuff. That was bad. Sync 4 is good. As long as the hard buttons are good. And this has a pretty decent sound system. Decent. For, for playing the Beach Boys, which I think would definitely be being played in this car. 100%. And if I'm an older person, maybe my arms are heavy. <laughs> I can put my elbows here. Yeah. While driving. Why are your arms heavy if you're old? Because <laughs> my muscles are weak. Oh, okay. So your arms aren't actually heavy. But and I'm not making fun of old people. Like, I love old people. I love old people style, old people car stuff. I get that there's certain cars directed to an older demographic. Someone left a comment. It's not that you're saying uh, that you don't like old people and you're saying old people. It's that you should be saying older people. Old people is not the term that they like. I read the comments. Okay, boomer, old boomers. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> the seats in the back are actually really comfortable for myself at six foot one and a half. So if you have your older friends going to bingo, no problem back there. <laughs> yeah, okay, got a lot of headroom, like a ton of headroom because I guess the way the roof is scooped out. We got a cool little sunroof here. What I really like also is that we've got pretty good adaptive cruise with lane centering in here. Yeah, and it's not uh, blue cruise, so it actually doesn't bother you that much. And blue cruise has actually never worked perfectly for We've never been able to drive anything blue cruise with our hands completely off the wheel in no. any vehicles we've driven in Toronto. Yeah, and it's not even for construction reasons. It's just, I don't know why it doesn't work. We so this is why. actually good. Yeah. And we've got hard buttons down here, so that's really lovely. Although seeing this <laughs> temperature thing without the actual display really sucks. Yeah, that, that feels like very <laughs> uh, budget. Yeah, but we do have uh, heated seats, no cooled, no heated steering wheel, which is odd. Gauge clusters chill, analog on the sides, digital in the middle. Cannot complain one bit. I like I like the simplicity. Yep. Okay, trunk room, very good. We got grocery bag hangers, which is like the best. And it's all rubberized as well, so your stuff doesn't really fly around back there. Oh, I went to the grocery store and I found a super treasure hunt Hot Wheels on the on the hanger, dead front and center. So I keep going back there to see if they restock for more super treasure hunts. Sick. But I haven't seen any yet. Yo, I, uh, my buddy got me the Fox Body one from uh, Fast and Furious, so I just opened that with my kid. Sick. He loved it. Also, let us know if you have super treasure hunt tips in the comments below. Yes, and your Hot Wheels collection. Uh, but back to the back, uh, we actually have a, like a tray table thing that can also move around. Yeah, you can slide that back and it'll like stand onto the bumper, which I guess it's like if you have snacks and you want people to like not lean too far into your car. Or a change table for children up to 30 pounds. Speaking of children. Well, if you put the change table, you, you, you change the kid <laughs> at the grade, you don't put them that high up. Yeah, but you can. Uh, anyways, the back seats for a baby seat are actually a pain in the ass because there's no room to get the car seat in there because the doors don't open very wide. And then once it's in here, the passenger is so far forward, you can't really use it. Have you ever tried putting a car seat in the back of a coupe? No, never. I, and I wouldn't dare with my back. That's a fun one. And then back to the trunk, there is also a cool light up in the top that you can control and you can angle. So that'd be really nice if you have to dig stuff out at night or whatever. Yeah, and then a bottle opener so you can go to parties and open bottles. <laughs> yeah, root beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the advertising stuff is. It's just opening like orange pop bottles. Yeah. Like, come on. Sody pops. Okay, Ford, I see what you you're doing. You can only have eight sody pops a day. The legal department's like, look, man, just have an orange soda. So I guess with all our rambling coming to an end, it's time we get to the price. <laughs> this one is $46,009. Can you buy an actual Bronco at that price? A regular non-heritage, yes you can. Like the cheapest Bronco Bronco is like around that price. Yeah. 
But like, would you rather have the cheapest Bronco or would you rather have a Heritage Sport? Personally, I'd rather have a regular Bronco. I don't know. I think the Heritage is cool. I think they it is cool. It, knocked it out of the park. I would definitely recommend getting one of these instead of a regular Bronco Sport. And I would recommend the Heritage Limited on tsp.truecar.com discounted price offers, and I wouldn't recommend this particular model. Blue or yellow? Doesn't matter. Yellow. Whatever's in stock. Thanks for watching, guys. Let us know which other Heritage edition of a car we should review next. Yes. Or you'd like to see made up in the future. Maybe I'll Photoshop one for you. I was going to say, what if there was a Raptor Heritage of some weird jump truck that we don't know about in the 60s or 70s? Bigfoot. Raptor, Bigfoot edition. Imagine a Raptor just in this color scheme, though. Like a there Raptor it is, there R. It is. I just Photoshopped it. <laughs> yeah. we, we killed it. Damn.